Hey, before we get into the show, I want to make a very special announcement about a live in-person event that I'm hosting June 25th through 27th in Sevierville, Tennessee, in East Tennessee in the Smoky Mountains. It's only limited to five people, so I only have a couple of spots left, but I wanted you as my listeners to get access to this. I want to give you the option to attend a mastermind intensive. This is going to be a three-day opportunity for you to unlock your potential with this mastermind intensive. So what is this about? It's a three-day mastermind intensive that's focused on the power of a true mastermind experience. Sunday night, we're going to get there around three o'clock and we're going to be focused on setting the foundation for the deep work that we're going to do over the next two days. You're going to get to meet each participant. We're going to have some downtime. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have a private chef on site cook an amazing food. We're going to have top shelf cigars and some bourbon and some rum if you're into that sort of thing. And then on Monday, we're going to spend the entire day focused on each unique challenge of each participant. The issues, the opportunities, whatever they're dealing with in their business, whatever you're dealing with, we're going to give you an opportunity to have an extended 90 minute hot seat session. On Tuesday, then we're going to take those 90 day or those 90 minute hot sessions and we're going to hot seat sessions. We're going to turn those into a 90 day action plan. So all day Tuesday, we're going to be working with each participant as a group to write out a 90 day action plan to get your business to the next level. What this opportunity is going to give you is to give you real intimate and supportive environment to tackle unique challenges that are holding you back from achieving your purpose in life from achieving success. You're going to get actionable advice, feedback, support. It's a real mastermind. It's not just this conference you go to with a talking head. It's a group of guys that are going to be working together to help you achieve everything you want to achieve. This is going to be taking place in the breathtaking Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee in my cabin, my personal cabin called Million Dollar View, right on the edge of a mountain where we can see Mount LeConte from the back porch. It's absolutely beautiful. You're not going to want to miss this. So if you are interested, all you got to do is go to therealjasonduncan.com slash intensive, therealjasonduncan.com slash intensive, or on the homepage, there's a banner at the top that has the announcement. You just click on it and go straight to it. Limited to five people. We only have a couple of slots left, so go check it out. I hope that you can make it. Now, let's get into the show. Hey everyone, I just had an awesome experience on the Root of All Success podcast with the real Jason Duncan. We had a really great conversation about success, how we identify success. We even flew to the moon together in some of the conversation. It was really, really a great experience, but also a great conversation that uh, was thought provoking. And so if you want to listen to it, check out The Root of All Success. I'm Michael Esposito, and I had a great time with you, Jason. Thanks for having me on. Welcome to the root of all success with the real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs unlocked success and how their stories can help you do the same. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason has built multi-million dollar businesses that have been featured in Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur Magazine. His life's mission now is helping entrepreneurs live what he calls hashtag the exit lifestyle. Introducing TEDx speaker, mastermind leader, author, entrepreneur, cigar aficionado, motorcycle enthusiast, and host of the root of all success, the real Jason Duncan. The real Jason Duncan. Welcome back to another episode. I am the real Jason Duncan. You can call me JD. I'm coming to you live. I'm recording this live. Of course, you're listening to this on a recording, but I'm coming to you from my cabin in the Great Smoky Mountains. It's called Million Dollar View. If you're interested in renting it, that's not why I'm here, but if you're interested in renting it, you go to airbnb.com slash H for host. So airbnb.com slash H for host slash million dollar view the number two. Now, it's a lot to remember. You probably don't care, but airbnb.com slash H slash million dollar view. And then the number two million dollar view two. check it out. That's where I am. My wife and I've been up here for a few days. I'm heading back. I've got a couple of episodes I'll be recording here today. Then we're heading back tonight. I've got an event I'm leading uh, in Nashville this evening. So I got to get on back. But today's show, I've got a guest coming in from the great state of New York. Michael Esposito is joining me on the show today. And we're going to be talking about the concept of greed and impact and what does it mean to have enough. 
So if, if you're watching this on YouTube, you saw that the the image that we created for this was Bezos and Musk. Uh, you know, and greedy and enough, or I can't remember what we put on there, but, but like the idea here is we're going to dive in as we get into this conversation, you're going to hear Michael and I talking about this idea of what does it mean to have enough? What does it mean to be greedy? What does it mean to make an impact in this world? And Michael's a good guy to talk about this because he's the founder and CEO of Denton Insurance Services and also a media company called Michael Esposito Inc., uh, he leads a team of insurance agents that do amazing things through his insurance company. And he's also created this media company to create big impact. And there's so many cool things that you want to talk. You're going to love about the talk that Michael and I have today. Um, he's been on 10X stages, helping with the leadership behind that. He's uh, part of the New Pulse Chamber of Commerce, Toastmasters, Forgotten Children of Haiti, which we're going to talk about that actually on the show about that charity that he supports and why that's so near and dear to his heart. He's uh, also part of local uh, local agencies like the Hudson Bas Hudson Valley Basketball Association, Association. Man, I can't talk. Hudson Valley Basketball Association and the New Paltz Connective. So uh, anyway, uh, you can check him out. I'll give you all of his socials at the end of the show. But without any further ado, please help me welcome Michael Esposito to the root of all success. Michael, welcome to the show, my man. Thank you for having me on. Well, uh, you had you were so nice to have me on your show not too long. Well, actually, it's been it's been a little bit. We this has been, been a couple a months ago. Yeah, and we've been trying to get you scheduled on my show. So here we are today. So um, tell everybody a little bit about your show as we get started, because I know pod, people who listen to podcasts always looking for good podcasts to listen to, and I know there's at least you know, one semi-decent episode of your show because you had me on it and you did a great job asking questions. <laughs> so, I think it was I think it was the best episode we recorded. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. Well, tell us a little bit about your show and uh, where everybody can find it. We'll start there. Sure, sure. Uh, it is called The Michael Esposito Show. You can find it on all streaming platforms, uh, more specifically iHeartMedia, Spotify, iTunes, and then, of course, all the rest. In that show, what, what I do is I interview people like yourself, JD, uh, successful entrepreneurs, business leaders, executives in, in different organizations, corporations, of course, community leaders, uh, all types of people who learned something on their path to success and are willing to impart that knowledge through their storytelling abilities or through different um, milestones along the way. Uh, and the, as you know, the, the Michael Esposito show is a conversational format. And typically a show can go anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours of really digging deep into the person who I'm interviewing or having a conversation with into their story. Well, I know that when I was on your show, it was a good conversation. You actually do a lot of your shows live in person. Um, where you, or the person comes to your studio, I actually was able, not able to do that. So I recorded online, but I would, act, I would encourage people to go check that out. The Michael Esposito show, go check that out now. So before we get into the questions about success, Michael, um, I want to ask you to tell the audience a little bit about what you do. You're in the insurance space and you've got a media company. So give everybody just a little sense of what that looks like and what you do on a regular basis. Sure. Uh, Michael Esposito Inc. Uh, was more of a grassroots type of media company. Uh, it started out with a lot of the social media videos that I had done and YouTube videos that I had done on really growing on personal and professional development and eventually uh, got me to have the podcast and start promoting uh, different people like yourself. And then, of course, my insurance company, Denton, through the podcast. I was able to use it as a platform like that. And that's when we really shifted into more of a media company than just a speaking business. Um, and so in that company, it's a grassroots organization. And uh, we're always looking to bring aboard uh, new types of clients to be able to promote them in different ways of whether it's social media or podcasting or videos and helping them really put together a really great media kit to be able to share their message in a way through content, through through content that creates value for the person on the other end. So that's really important. And that's what we do at Michael Esposito Inc. That's what I do. And then we go into Denton. Denton Insurance Services is our family owned independent insurance agency uh, right here in the Hudson Valley. I know you're, you're in Tennessee, right? Or you're actually uh, away from your home in Tennessee, a little bit out in the mountains right now. But 
we're in New York in the Hudson Valley region. Uh, we also cover Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, uh, Connecticut, and a couple other states, but I won't go down the whole rabbit hole there. And Denton Insurance Services was named after my daughters, Denise and Tenley. So if it says anything, it's really about a legacy company. What I'm creating here is an insurance agency that is here for the long haul, not to just start with me and die with me. And the second part that's so important to that legacy is why I created Denton Insurance Services. Sure, we do home, auto, business, life insurance. That's all wonderful. You can come to us and learn about all of our different services. But the reason why I started it outside of naming it after my daughters and creating a legacy for my family is also to give back. I was raised with the idea of giving back. I was raised with a non-for-profit called Forgotten Turn of Haiti that my parents had started. And it was very important for me that when I started my entrepreneurial journey that we would give back. So Den 10 Insurance Services is committed to donating over 1% of our revenue to different non-for-profits, both locally and globally, as well as volunteering our time and service to our communities that we serve. So what is it about Haiti that uh, made you say that's the that's the charity, that's the give back that we want to do? Sure. And you can see that's the Haitian flag right there above me over my shoulder there. My mother is Haitian. Uh, she grew up born and raised in Haiti and moved to the States. And when she was a teenager due to political unease in the country when when she was a teenager uh, from there. Uh, she married my father, who's a Vietnam vet. So a uh, big shout out to all of our veterans out there. Uh, I, I truly believe that what she went through in Haiti as a child and what she experienced, and then, of course, my father's experience in Vietnam is what uh, really brought them together and um, uh, connected them because they come from such different cultural backgrounds and stat, um, status backgrounds, really. Um, and so for them to meet and come together, I really believe that that's what bonded them. Uh, but so growing up, uh, the hate, my, my mother's Haitian, our family on that side of, of my family is all Haitian. And uh, we always were very aware of the need in Haiti. We were always very aware of what was happening to the people in Haiti. And uh, in 1993, my parents decided to formalize the work and the, the, what they were doing in Haiti already. They decided to formalize that and form Forgotten Children of Haiti, which is a non-for-profit organization. They did that through the help and through the work of other community members and other family members. And it was, it was a terrific organization in this heyday, and meaning that we would do galas and art shows and fundraisers and bus rides and all sorts of events. But eventually my parents aged out and other uh, organizations for Haiti from different family members started also branching out and they started uh, HHH and all these other ones, which are really wonderful. But I carried the baton for Forgotten Children of Haiti. And that's why that's so important to us. And uh, I will say that we supported before the earthquake, which devastated my mother's school. At one time, we did support her old school that she graduated from. You know, I um I, I didn't know that about you. I didn't know, I didn't know your mom was Haitian. I, I um, so now that certainly makes sense. I, I've, uh, I've got a friend who started a, a school there called the Joseph school. I don't know by, by chance. Have you ever heard of that? No, no. you might want to check that out. Um, but ever since the, I guess it was what, four years ago, they had the political unrest and it was do not fly. Like U S was saying, do not go to Haiti. It was that bad. It was so dangerous. Um, my flight, I mean, we'd already booked the flights. We were on Delta and big shout out to how crappy Delta is. Like we, 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 we were bought the tickets, bought the insurance from Allianz. Maybe it's Allianz travel services, the insurance that was actually the ones that I should say are crappy, but we bought the tickets and then U S said, do not fly to Haiti. They didn't restrict it. They didn't say we won't, you can't, but we are not recommending you go. So we canceled the trip. And uh, try to get my money back, and they wouldn't. They wouldn't give me the money back, wow. so they sucked. But we still, to this day, haven't been able to go because from everything we're saying, we're hearing. And I talked to the the founder of the Joseph School just a few weeks ago, and he said, "Yeah, it's tough. We we can't get anybody into the country to help. The te the school's not even meeting because of where they're you know where they're located. It's not safe. So have you uh, have you guys experienced some of that same thing, or is there have you guys figured out ways to to be able to provide the support and physical support when necessary?" Yeah, it's actually worse today from what you're talking about four years ago uh, in that there, there isn't, we're, we're not going there. And, uh, and we've been advised not to go there. Um, we're 
in a position uh, with with it's very similar to you where we have somebody there that is is there and that's who we we fund essentially uh so uh father rick Frechette, who founded the saint luke organization with his family uh the saint luke organization is essentially a community a, a self-sustained community in haiti where they have a school an orphanage a hospital uh the tilapia tanks a bakery um all sorts of different things inside of this community that helps it run itself to where they don't really need to leave uh, its safety. Uh, but they do need to leave its safety. They, Father Rick Frechette is uh, really c- committed to the Haitian community. And he goes out and, out and into through the barricades that they've, that they've created uh, to pick up the dead bodies, the dead bodies in the street, put them on the ambulance, mm-hmm. And bring them back for a proper burial. Uh, whether the person needs medical attention or these dead bodies, he still leaves those walls to do that. And so, um, you know, that, that's as good as, it, as we can really serve the people in Haiti is, is through his work and the work of the people that he has there already in place. And so what Forgotten Children of Haiti does, and uh, hopefully many organizations like us, uh, is really help fund his work. Because they still need to pay for gas in those ambulances. They still need to pay employees to put their lives at risk to help others. And so if we can fund them, then that's what we do. And, you know, part of where Denton comes into this, kind of just to stay on this for one second here, is that the, the larger I can uh, build Denton up to be, the more I can contribute to a cause like that. And that's really what drives me as a business owner. Um, you know, I know that this is all about success and everything. And for me, that's where success lies is how many people I can impact, how many people I can help. And if I can help more people by growing my insurance business, well, then that's what I need to do. And when I think about a tough day's work in the insurance business, what makes me feel better about it is how many people can that tough day's work impact positively. Well, I think that uh, what you're saying there is phenomenal because that's what really business should be about is about figuring out how we can, as entrepreneurs, leverage our financial success to provide a successful life for those that don't have that opportunity. Because we live in the land of the opportunity. We live in the best country in the in the world. We all have opportunity. We have equal opportunity. We have equal opportunity to make choices. And yet there are so many millions and millions of people, billions perhaps, that don't have those opportunities. So why don't we leverage that? So Michael, I think that what you're saying, a lot of, a lot of listeners are going to really resonate with that. So let's dive into success uh, a little bit. Actually, you know what? I did want to have a question. You, you said Dente was named your daughter's Denise, but I didn't hear, I, I couldn't understand what yeah. your second daughter, what's her name? That's right. And Tenley, Denise and Tenley. Ah, uh, Tenley. Okay. So Denise Tenley. I'm familiar with. The Tenley is a name I'm not as familiar uh, with. Would, I'll cool. give you the, I'll give you the quick funny story on that was I am a traditionalist with names. Denise is named after my grandmother and my, and shout out to my, my father-in-law as well. So that's kind of how we got the okay on Denise was my grandmother and my father-in-law is Dennis. And so my, my wife was like, all right, approved. Uh, but my wife is not a traditionalist with names. And when she came to me with Tenley, I was like, wait a second. I was thinking more like Nicole. And, uh, but here's the thing. We're going to, we're going to go off the track here just for a little bit of fun and some personal of who I am and how I am is, uh, my wife says, well, it's after a movie that I really liked. And I went, whoa, now we're even further from where I want to be in terms of naming my daughter, our daughter. And she said, yeah, but it's, it's this movie called, uh, Summer's Catch and Jessica Biel plays Tenley. And wow, that threw me back to when I was a teenager and I had the biggest crush on Jessica Biel. Shout out to Seventh Heaven. Go back and watch a few episodes. I, I was in love with her. I thought she was so beautiful. And so to name my daughter after such a beautiful woman was only an honor. And so I said, let's do it. <laughs> so, all right. So, yeah, a little Jessica Biel action there. All right. I like it. All right. So, Den- Denise. And Tenley for Den Ten. So let's let's dive into success. So this is the root of all success. So if you had to distill your success as an entrepreneur down to one key, one thing that you said, this is what allowed me to become successful, what would Michael Esposito say? Yeah, it's perseverance. It was uh, perseverance to me is the root of all success uh, because the road is hard no matter which way you turn. 
And so it's not about making the road easier. It's not about making the path easier. Uh, we, we hope for things to be smoothed out or a little bit more and for things to be a little bit easier. And we, we, we look for guidance and all of that. But the truth is, is that you might have an easy stretch. You might have a few days that go by and it's like, whoa, this was great. This was fantastic. But then you're going to get hit with something and it's going to be heavy and it's going to be hard. It's how do you get through that? How do you overcome that? That to me is is the root of all success is being able to persevere. Uh, you know, the easy times, they're easy to persevere through. It's easy to go through a really good year. Right. But it's can you go through a really hard, sucky month? Can you go through a hard, sucky couple months? Because if you can, then in that moment, I want us to also realize something. It's not just about getting over the other side of that hard, sucky month, year, whatever it is. It's in the moment that you're stuck in that. If you can persevere through it, you're going to learn so much about yourself, about your business, about everything around you. And taking that knowledge and looking at it and applying it in different ways, you're going to come up with so many different solutions and different ways to solve that problem at hand and be able to continue on your path. And so to me, that's why perseverance is so important in success. I love it. And I, 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 I can echo that sentiment because one of the things I say, like there's five keys to success that I've discovered throughout all of these shows I've done. And the first, I think is passion, but as passion is truly defined, it really would be perseverance. It's the ability to push through the ability to suffer, the ability to withstand the negatives, just mm -hmm. what you're talking about, pushing through the sucky day, pushing through the crappy day, pushing through the crappy quarter <laughs> or crappy right. year. Like it's, it's being able to persevere through all that junk and, and make it. So perseverance key, your key to being coming successful. So now let me ask you another question, Michael, what, how would you define the word success? Let's take a quick break to thank our amazing sponsors for making this podcast possible. Hey, I want to talk with you about one of my favorite tools as a salesperson and as an entrepreneur, and that tool is Dub. I want you to imagine for a minute getting an email from somebody, and instead of just being the plain old crappy text in an email, rather than just having a bunch of HTML where it's pictures and stuff, what if it was a video? And the video had a little GIF, and it was playing right there in the email as soon as you opened it, and it had your name. Like it said, hello, Jason, check this out. And then you clicked play and it played right there in your inbox, in the window. And it was somebody trying to tell you how great you are, or how awesome they can help you, how good they can help you out. That is the power of video emails. I want you to try Dub out. I've been using it for years. I have closed countless millions of dollars of, in sales over the last six years or so using Dub, and you can do it too. All you got to do is go to therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. That's D-U-B-B, therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. Dub will help you make an impact in your sales through video. It's going to help you with, they've even got a CRM built into it. You can build landing pages. You can do campaigns, even SMS campaigns. You can set up automations to manage workflows and maximize conversions. And like I said, they've got an existing software platform inside Dub to take your CRM to the next level. Try this out, get a free special just by being a listener to the podcast. Go to the realjasonduncan.com slash dub, get two weeks to try it for free and 50% off your first two months. That's the realjasonduncan.com slash dub. I love talking about this sponsor because it's oftentimes a lot of people talk about sponsors on their shows or have sponsors and they either don't use them or they might've used them once and they're not really in love with it. They just take their money. <laughs> and, and certainly there's nothing wrong with that. But this sponsor, this one of my sponsors of the podcast is Story, S-T-O-R-Y-Y. -Y. Two whys, why? Because they're awesome. If you've ever wondered how these influencers do their Instagram reels and their TikToks and their YouTube shorts to look so amazing where they've got the zoom cuts and the pop-ups and the on-screen illustrations, whether it's cartoons or actual images or videos that get responses, that people go, ooh, I want to talk to that. If you want to know how people do that, that 
is exactly what Story does. They take your videos and they make you look like an influencer. They make you become an influencer. And they will post it for you. They'll write the captions. They'll add the relevant hashtags. They put it on the platforms that you care about the most. And after that content's posted, they take it even one step further to boost it to your past clients, your leads, or anyone that you want to target. And they even have someone log into your social media profile to engage with other people's posts to drive engagement on your profile. Story truly takes the headache away from doing social media content from start to finish. And they have a mission to help people nurture and cultivate their relationships by sharing your message digitally. And they even have an app that makes it easy to upload your content and track everywhere your video is at. And I've been using them for a long time. And I told them, I said, look, guys, I love what you're doing. I want to recommend you to everybody. You need to be a sponsor of my podcast. And so they're a co-sponsor of this podcast. And they're also the exclusive sponsor of my live webinar series, Entrepreneur Master Series, because they're that good. I tell everybody about them. So go to therealjasonduncan.com slash story to learn more. And that's therealjasonduncan.com slash story, S-T-O-R-Y-Y. Why are there two Ys? Because they're awesome. You'll get 10% off your first three months if you go to that link, therealjasonduncan.com slash story. Thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now, back to the show. Yeah, and, and I touched on it earlier, and, and it really has to do with the way, the impact that you create for others. That impact can come in so many different ways. So success, and that's why I believe success is defined differently to everybody. You, you ask me, and I'm sure you ask so many different podcast guests, and they have different answers. But at the end of the day, it really has to do with how you impacted others. If it's to, if success is meaning that you built a huge business where you generate a ton of revenue and you're able to uh, retire early, like like you you talk a lot about, then that's great. And you're impacting others when you do that, right? Um, but for me, I look at it very similarly, and I'm going to just address it in my own way of like impacting others. For me, in terms of success, means helping people who don't have the opportunities that we have, who don't have the safety that I might have, who don't have the food that I might have, and to be able to help them. And then and then in addition to all of that is to then help them think differently. Because it's important to me to be able to help others on a global, like when I bring up Haiti here, it's very important to me to be able to do that. And then also inside of my team, it's very important for me to help my team overcome their challenges and struggles and help them think and everything. But outside of being able to provide all of that opportunity for people and give them you know, food, shelter, money, clothes, all the other things, it's then to be able to help them think differently. So to be able to impact them in a way that they can also now start looking at their lives and at the world in a different way and through a different lens to where they can start achieving and becoming successful on their own to where they can start uh, building a company or become going into a career where they can generate income to get a safe home, to provide food for their family and shelter and clothes and all the rest. Uh, so when I think about success, that's how I see it. And, you know, my coach and I have gone over this with me of, of, Where do I see myself once Den 10 is in stable footing and financially secure and stable and where I need it to be? I I see myself creating a team of leaders that understand my philosophy and that want to help serve that team and serve the company the way that it needs to be served and serve the community. And then I see myself as the founder of all of that, but then really working on the side of working in Haiti, working right here in, in the Hudson Valley with the people in need and, and forming boards and committees to be able to do different initiatives to help these communities lift themselves up. Wow. So impact on others is what it boils down to and how you're helping others with the with what you have. So with that as a definition, do you consider yourself to be a successful person? Yeah. And you know, I brought up my coach earlier and I saw you kind of smile there because I know you also do that in it's so important when you have a coach because they help you realize the things that you're doing. Uh, they help you realize what you're missing, but they also help you what realize what you're doing. And, you know, if you would have asked me that question, 
let's say about three years ago before I, I hired my coach, I probably would have said, no, I don't know. I don't know if I really am doing that. But through the work that I do with my coach and um, realizing all the different ways that I impact others, yeah, I, I would say that I'm as successful as I possibly can be in this moment. I think that there is so much more to strive for. I, you know, anybody who's listening to this podcast, who's watching this, who follows you, they're striving for more and more and more success. So there's always more success to strive for. But right now in this moment, I'm as, as successful as I can possibly be. And it's because every single day leading into this moment, I've put in the time and effort to impact the people in my community, my team members, my family. We forget about that when we think about success in business. My family, I've put in the time and effort to impact them in a positive way. And I'll give a quick example of that. I have a team member who is getting licensed right now. So it's an insurance company and you need to have a license to do that. And she was really stressing out yesterday. And I'm very fortunate in that right near me is, is the, the longest pedestrian walkway bridge in the world. That's how they tout it. That's what they say. I'm not going into the facts and figures on that. It, but it's a beautiful bridge that goes over the Hudson River here. And it's got it's just right, right up the road from me. And so I said, hey, why don't you meet me at the walkway bridge? Let's take a walk. And we went for a walk and she's telling me about what she's experiencing, what she's going through. And I put my coach's hat on because I've gone through coaching as well through courses on that. And I put my coach's hat on and I listened to her. I gave her feedback. I, I, I acknowledged what she was saying. I gave her feedback. And as we concluded the walk, we hugged each other. And she said to me, she really felt heard and she felt so much better and confident about going into the licensing exam. And that is what I mean by impact. It doesn't always have to be putting a shirt on someone's back. It doesn't always have to be a $10,000 check. It could just be listening and acknowledging a team member, a family member, a person in the street that you don't know. Impact is uh, so many, there's so many layers to it, right? I mean, it's like an onion. You can't peel it back. I mean, there's impact you're making as a dad on your daughters. There's an impact that you're making on your wife. There's an impact you're making on your employees, which you just illustrated. There's an impact you're making on the community. There's an impact you're making on your, your customers. And then, you know, I, I look at it this way, and I, I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way, but if you think about, if you think about the world as a body of water, you know, and, and if you took, took this pin, for instance, I'm taking notes, like I take this little, this little pin right here, and I toss this pin into that body of water, like this pin is going to make an impact. It's not going to be a very big one. But it is going to be an impact. There's going to be ripples. And, and these ripples, whether we can see them or not, are actually going to touch every single corner of that body of water. But then if I go jump in that body of water, for example, and I do a cannonball, like it's going to make a big impact. And there's lots of things. And then the edges of the pool are going to overflow and the concrete's going to be wet. Like the impact that I seem to find that people like you want to make is that you want to be that kind of cannonball in the water. We want to affect everything. We want to make as big an impact as we can, not just on our own family, not just on our own community around us, but the world. Like, have you ever, you ever thought about that in terms of uh, the ability to impact people based on, you know, how big of a splash you're making? Yeah, and I love that you brought up the pen because as soon as you brought up the pen, I'm thinking, and, and that's why it's so important to throw in 100 pens and to not do it alone in that, when I think about when I talk about impact and talking about it from a financial and a volunteer standpoint, and then I add on and so that we can help others think differently, that's where it's like, well, my cannonball and your cannonball are great, but imagine if we had a hundred cannonballs and that's where if we can help the, if the people that we help, we can also help them think differently and see through a different lens, then they're going to be able to create that impact on others as well. And if they can create that impact on others and get those others to think differently and see differently through that lens, they're going to. And so you could imagine the ripple effect that we're talking about here and how it just multiplies and therefore creates a better world, we hope for. We, we understand, or at least I understand, and I, I think you know, this might be some logic playing into it, that there's always going to be people out there that we're not going to be able to help think differently. There's always going to be people out there who are not going to be able to get out of the, their own way or who are not going to be able to overcome the circumstances that they're in and are going to be in that negative place. We're not going to be able to help everybody. 
and this was some, this was a message that was imparted on me that, that really resonated with me was, um, I'm not going to be able to help everybody, but at least if I can help one person, then I'm creating the impact that I've committed to creating. And if I can help that one person, then maybe that one person can help one person themselves and we can continue to do that. And it's just important that we look at it that way and that don't focus on the negative. Don't focus on the people that we can't serve or that haven't been able to um, take from what we're giving. Focus on the people that you can serve and the people that you can help and focus on that and continue to do that work and stay in that mission um, and create more cannonballs. So let's talk about the, the you, you've uncovered maybe a, an idea that I want to dive in a little bit deeper to continue to use this pool analogy. Uh, no pun intended, but, but I, I, I think, think about this, like the word enough, the word enough there, there's, there's, there's people who would look at people like you and me as entrepreneurs, successful business owners. And, you know, we're always try, striving for more, like more, more customers, more revenue, more, whatever, whatever the more is. And, and, and occasionally I get a detractor. You hear it. I hear it. When's enough enough? Like why, when have you had enough? And I see enough in the context of this conversation as a selfish concept. And I'm going to explain to you what I think. And then I want to give you a chance to disagree with me or agree, whatever you think. Sure. So I think, I think enough is a selfish word in that, like, what does that mean? What, what does enough mean? So, so is enough. Okay. I need 200 grand a year to live. Okay. That's enough. I don't need any more. So once I make 200 grand, I'm out. Well, okay. If that is my perspective, but what if, if I made 400 grand and then I could help 10 other people escape poverty uh, or, or what if I made a million a year and what if I could help a thousand people a year escape poverty? Or what if I made two million a year? Like, you see what I mean? Like enough seems to be at some point is just selfish. Like, what if I just said, I just want enough for me and my wife. I don't care about my kids. You think I'm selfish. But if I said, okay, well, what if I, I just want enough for me and my wife and my two kids? Well, we don't see that as selfish, but isn't that the same thing? Like at some point enough seems to be selfish. Now I get that there's a greed thing in it that people are perce perceiving. That's not really what, that's not what you're talking about. It's not what I'm talking about, but this enough idea, if we really want to make an impact in the world, like you and I've just been talking about, I've been writing notes. If we really want to make an impact, we got to, we got to, we got to erase enough from the category. We got to erase it because impact and enough don't go together. That's my thought. What do you think? I I agree with you in that, and I, I, I will put one one thing into context here of of what you said in terms of greed, is that I, I think our definition of greed might vary across the board, but just to simplify it so that we can continue on this idea of enough, is that what I would define as a greedy person is someone who doesn't want to share anything that they have with anyone, and I don't mean like share their wealth. Share anything, right? So they're they're earning a bunch of money. Uh, typically, that that's what we're we're seeing in terms of greed. They're earning a bunch of money, buying a bunch of things, and then they're withholding all of the knowledge that they have in terms of earning that money. They're withholding that for themselves. In uh, anything that they buy or or purchase or whatever it is, they're not sharing it with their friends, their family, or anything. And and then on top of it, they're probably not tipping their waiters and waitresses very much either, right? So they're not only are they greedy, but they're cheap. Right. So that that to me is like greed because they're not really cheap. They're just greedy. They just don't want to pay more than they need to on the bill. Right. So they're greedy. When we talk about the idea of enough and where people might make the mistake is, but what about the Jeff Bezos of the world or the Elon Musk's of the world who are making billions of dollars and continue to double down and make more and more and more? Aren't they greedy? Well, I don't know them personally and I don't know how they tip anybody. But I'll say this, you see them regularly. They share their ideas. They share their thoughts regularly. They've put their personal finances on the line to be able to support their businesses. Now, it could have been selfish in supporting their business of like, I don't want to see my business fail. But on the other end, who else was in that business? A ton of employees that they made sure didn't get laid off or cut or, or lose a job. So when I think about people like that, enough is never going to be enough for them. And, and it shouldn't be. Well, I don't want to say shouldn't be, but it doesn't need to be enough because they continue to contribute 
to society. They can tr continue to share their ideas, their learnings, their findings to society. When Jeff Bezos got a bunch of flack for going uh, into outer space and, and people want to debate whether he went into outer space or not, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson all decided we're going to start this space race. And what did that lead to? It led to innovation in our on, on the ground level for all of us. When you look at Tesla and what, what Elon Musk has done with Tesla, if he doesn't innovate Tesla and challenge your big three of four GM, and I, uh, I can't think of the other one, if he doesn't challenge them with his Tesla, we don't see, start seeing electric vehicles on a regular basis of your little Evos that are 20 grand compared to Elon's 120. So these people that are continuously striving for uh, for more and enough is never enough for them and they get kind of like bashed in the media for it, they're, they're creating opportunities for us. I'm going to go to a Devil Wears Prada reference here because it's what, what just made snap in my mind. If you know the movie The Devil Wears Prada and, you know, like throwback right here, right? And I don't remember all the actresses' names and I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But she was just a really mean boss and she was creating a, a fashion line and was a really mean boss in this fashion line. And her assistant came in with this like sweater one day and was just like, you're really mean and you just don't understand what's going on out there. And and the mean boss, uh, was it Meryl Streep? Uh, she so, says, yeah. yeah, she says to her, you see, you're wearing that sweater right now. But what you don't realize is that $20 sweater that you got off the rack at some like low end department store, all was built off of the innovation that we created here in the design of this you know, $200 sweater. And because we put in all this time and effort and work and energy in creating this $200 sweater, you were able to go out and afford this $10 sweater that mimics the qualities of this. And so I, that's what I'm talking about when we talk about enough is enough. If we don't have those people who want to go to the moon and who want to break boundaries and who want to continue striving for more, if we don't have those people, then we don't have the little $20,000 car that every single one of us can now afford, uh, at least the working class, right? So we need that. Well, I, I, I love, I can sense the passion in, in your voice as you talk about this, Michael, because I'm with you and I, I'm glad that we agree with one another because I look at the Bezos and, and the Musks and the Bransons of the world and where other people see them as selfish and greedy and the, Hey, don't they have enough? I look that, I look at the people who call them that those are the selfish and greedy people. Those are the people that just say, Hey, I've got my corner of the world carved out and I'm just going to do whatever it takes to just make sure I'm taken care of. And I don't give a blank about anybody else. Now they wouldn't say that out loud, but that's how their life, that's what their life is. So when I look at people like you building Denton as an insurance company, building Michael Esposito Inc as a media company to continue to build revenue and build opportunity is for impact. It is not just to create enough for you and your family of four, just so that you can live a nice, eke out a nice little life in New York. This is about making sure that you can make a huge impact. And for you, it's it's Haiti and, and, and other things that you do with the Chambers of Commerce, et cetera. I love it. And I want listeners to hear that. I want listeners to know that Bezos and, and Musk and Branson, they might be selfish, greedy bastards. We don't know. We don't know. But, but we don't know them personally. Yeah, we don't know them personally, but but looking from the outside in as an entrepreneur, looking through an entrepreneur lens, I look at what they're accomplishing. And just like your example of the car and the innovation and the space and innovation and Devil Wars Prada, that, you know, the innovation, this is what this is about. And so if people are selfish or people think that we're selfish and we're greedy and enough's enough, you know, oh, oh well, I think that the, I think they're looking in a mirror and they're just calling themselves they're calling well, other people what they see themselves. Well, in. I'll give a shout out to you and your coaching, right? Because we, we talk about coaching and I know you do it. And and what I'm talking about in terms of impact and thinking differently is that they may not understand and may need to speak with someone like you uh, on on changing their perception of things, because sometimes people see it and and you you might be right. They might they might be the greedy one in, in that they, they want to carve out their corner. But it also might be that they don't understand how that impact it impacts their lives and how they can actually do it too. I think sometimes people throw shade or hate or whatever at others because they don't know how they can do it too. And so it's easier to say something sucks or that you don't like something than it is to realize that if you 
can internalize and see, okay, how did that person do it? How can I go and do it now? Right. And if you could start looking at it that way, that's, that's looking through a different lens. And so I, I encourage all of those, all of your listeners out there who know you and are following you to reach out for some coaching or for some advice, because it might just be changing a perception. It might just be looking at it through a different lens. It might be asking yourself some questions. It really is about perception. Because I think I think conversations like this help all of us get better perception. Um, well, let me ask you this question as we kind of close out the show today. As we close our conversation down, I want you to think about the thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs that listen to this show. And I want you to give your one piece of advice, like that one piece of advice that if Michael Esposito is on stage somewhere and he's going to give advice to entrepreneurs. What's this one thing that you would say as a piece of advice? Keep growing. It, it's simple, but keep growing in that the entrepreneurial journey is different for all of us. The challenges are different. The obstacles are different. Everything is different. The success is different. We define all of this differently. But the one thing that we can continue to do that will continue to keep us successful is to develop and grow and realize that once we stop doing that, once we stop learning, once we stop asking for help, once we stop asking others for advice, once we stop networking and getting on podcasts like this and talking, once we stop listening to all of the stuff that helps us grow, that's when success ends. That's when our journey pretty much comes to a conclusion. And it's just like, all right, that's it. It's over. We got to continue to grow. And I'll leave with this final quote. And I love it. It's right here on my, it's a, it's a post-it right here. So I'll read it for you. It's each person we meet is our teacher and our student. And so if we continue to look at life that way, if we continue to look at our entrepreneurial journey that way, that everybody we meet can both be our teacher and our student, then we'll always continue to grow. And that's really what I have for you in terms of advice. I love that quote. Each person we meet is our teacher or our student. And our we student. look at it that way. You know, we're all we're all links in a chain. And so, you know, if we're connected to someone above us, we're hanging on to them so they can lift us up. We're also connected to somebody below us so that they can hang on to us so we can lift them up that we're all we're all in this together. That's right. And uh, so, Michael, man, listen, it's uh, it's a pleasure to know you. I'm glad that I don't remember how we originally got connected, but I'm really glad that you uh, invited me to be on your show. And uh, people need to go check that out. As we talked about at the top of the show, so make sure people go check that out. We'll put the link to that in the show notes. So uh, shout out to my editor, Clarice. Make sure that the link to his show gets put in the show notes. But but also, I appreciate you coming on my show and telling a little bit about your perspective on success, your keys to success. And uh, I'm going to recap that for everybody in the outro here in just a minute. But thank you for being on the show, man. Any any final words? I'm going to give you the last word on the show today. Anything you want to leave everybody with? Yeah. So you said your thousands of entrepreneurs were listening. And what I, what I want to leave all of you with is to keep going after your dreams and to think about your dreams right now and 10x them is when, when we think about, when we look back at our successes, when we look back at anything that we've done in our lives, imagine if you could have done it bigger. Imagine if you could have done it even bigger than you had thought. And so Right now, you're all in a moment where you have the future ahead of you, where you have a journey ahead of you. And if you could look at that moment right now and say, what if I made it 10 times bigger? What if I'd made it 10 times bigger? How many more lives could I impact? That's great, man. That goes back to our enough conversation. So thank you for, for finishing on a high note. Michael, thanks for being on the show, man. Uh, congratulations on your success. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Wow. There you have it. Another successful entrepreneur about his journey to success and what it means to be successful. And I want to recap a little bit about what we talked about. And then I'm going to make an offer to you that I think you're going to be really interested and want to know about to take what he and I just talked about to actual execution. So, so here's the deal. He said that his key to success was perseverance. Perseverance. And that is the five out of the five keys to success that I teach. You know, the first is passion that fits right in there. He also said that his definition of success is all about how you impact others, which led us into this amazing conversation about what greed means and what 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 enough means and what does it mean to make an impact? 
So what Michael is doing, I think the heart of what he's doing and trying to accomplish is amazing. And I, and I can appreciate that so, so very much. Now, if you're interested in figuring out, and he talked about coaching being that perspective that can help you figure out what to do next, how to make that impact, how to get beyond just wanting enough for you and your you and yours, but to make impact in the world, I want you to check this out. I'm hosting a mastermind intensive retreat of, for only five people, five people here at my cabin, million dollar view here in the Great Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee in Sevierville. We're about an hour outside of Knoxville. So you could fly into Knoxville, drive over here, and you'd spend two and a half days with me and uh, up to four, four uh, other entrepreneurs uh, because everybody's going to get their own bedroom. Everybody's going to have their own bed. Um, we're going to be diving deep into your business. And this is a true mastermind experience. This is not a talking head where I'm going to just teach you the whole week. It's about you coming in on Sunday night and we're going to get to know each other. We're going to hang out. We're going to have a chef that's going to prepare a private meal. We're going to smoke some fine cigars. If you're into that sort of thing, have a couple of drinks and really get to know everybody here. And then on Monday, we're going to spend the entire day doing deep, hot seat sessions with each individual. And what that's going to look like is, you know, we're going to set a timer and each person gets that 90 minutes to, to, to lay out everything that's going in their business, ideas, concepts, issues, opportunities, strengths, and weaknesses. And the other guys in the room with me helping to facilitate that are going to help you see more clearly through those obstacles, things that are preventing you from being able to be successful. Now that's all day Monday. Then on Tuesday, all day Tuesday, we're going to do the same thing again. But instead of asking you about issues and opportunities, we're going to do action plans. And so every single person who walks away on Tuesday at 4 p.m. is going to have a 90 day action plan written specifically for what they need to accomplish in their business moving forward based on all the stuff that we talked about the day before. It's only twenty five hundred dollars all in to do that. You just got to get yourself here. That is is the best investment you're going to make in 2023 in your business. When was the last time you invested in yourself financially? $2,500 to have that type of experience, to walk away with a written 90-day plan to get you to the next level. All you have to do is go to therealjasonduncan.com slash intensive, intensive. There's actually a banner at the top of the homepage. You can click on that. It takes you right to it. So go to therealjasonduncan.com and sign up. You want to be here. Now, if you can't come to this one, go ahead and sign up anyway. Uh, I'm only going to limit to the first five people who sign up. If you don't get to come to this one, you can go ahead and prepay and get in before the prices go up for the next one. I'll be doing another one later this year here at the same location. So make sure you go to therealjasonduncan.com slash intensive or on the homepage, you can click on the banner at the top and go straight to the page and sign up and secure your bed for the, for the uh, mastermind intensive. Well, Tune in again next time when I talk with yet another very successful entrepreneur about what they consider their key or their route to success and how they define it, etc. Until then, I am the real Jason Duncan, and as always, Jesus is King. Attention business owners. Attention business owners. Feeling burnout from running your business? Uncertain if you're nearing burnout? Take our free 10-question business burnout test at businessburnouttest.com to discover where you stand. With just 10 quick questions, you'll learn how to immediately begin making changes to regain freedom and success. Cut your daily operations time in half. Improve your quality of life and prepare your business for your future exit without losing revenue or profit. Visit businessburnouttest.com now and take the test. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with The Real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Follow Jason on social media at The Real Jason Duncan. See you again next time here on The Root of All Success.